comfort that no other voice can speak. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I must go without a murmur and his footsteps follow still. I must have the Savior with me in the onward march of life through the tempest and the sunshine through the battles and the strife then my soul shall fear no ill let him I must go without a murmur and his footsteps follow still. Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me away. Follow still. Can we do it one more time? Then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I must go. Shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I must go without a murmur and his footsteps. Just one more time, then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me away. I must go. the Lord. Let us bow our heads this morning. Father, we honor your mighty and your matchless name. Unto thee, O God, do we lift our soul today. We pray, God, that you will grant us the strength that we will take authority over every area of our lives. Father, we reject everything that is not of you today, and we exalt the Holy Spirit in our lives. Father, we put our trust in you, and we know, God, that once we put our trust in you, you will not let us uh, be ashamed. Father, you said in your word that your love has been spread abroad in our hearts uh, by the Holy Spirit which is given uh, unto us. Uh, 
We are no longer an outcast, oh God. But this morning we are able to say that we are joined here because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we can say today that at times our strength indeed do fail. And trials come on both sides. But Father, you have reminded us in your word that in this world we will have tribulations. But we must keep heart because you have overcome the world. So Father, give us today the endurance to hold on and never let go. To always remember, God, that you are with us. To always remember, oh God, that you have put principalities and powers to an open and shamed and that it doesn't matter the pain that we are feeling it doesn't matter the wilderness that we are going through you have already gone through it for us so father God strengthen us today grant us the tenacity God just to continue holding on and to continue this walk of faith. Bless your people today, oh God. And as we come, Father, we pray that our hearts will be transformed. We pray that the Spirit of God will breathe afresh upon us, oh God, that when we leave here, we will indeed say that it is good, that it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Grant us access into your presence today and bring about change in our lives that we will come continue to hold fast uh, the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ and that we will continue to keep on the fire in line. Uh, so bless us today and bless this service. Uh, add a blessing to your word uh, that will go forth in our ears today and in the hearts of your people in Jesus holy name. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah, I am blessed. I am blessed every day of my life. I am blessed when I wake up in the morning and I lay. Remember reading a story a long time ago 
where the young man was walking on the street and he saw, he was driving and he saw a person with a nicer car. He thought it was a nicer car than his. And so he said, my God, that person is blessed and I wish I had that car. And there was somebody that was on a bicycle that was looking at the person that was jealous of the one with the better thought he had a better car. And he, the person on the bicycle was saying that, boy, I wish I had that little car that I could drive because when rain is falling, I have to park my bicycle and I can't go. And then there was somebody else that was walking, looking at the, bike, the person on the bicycle and said, God, I wish I had a bicycle that I could ride where I am going. And there was somebody in the window, that was, someone in the window, and that person was looking at the person, looking at the man on the bicycle, and said, God, I wish I was not in this wheelchair. I wish that I could walk like that man. I wish I had the health and the strength that I could walk. And so every one of us, our definition of blessing is totally different. For somebody that is blind today, they wish that they could see. Somebody that that is crippled today they wish that they could walk somebody glory be to God that is in a strait today they wish that deliverance would come for them and we are here our hands are moving yes everything is not what we would want it to be but we are blessed today because of the goodness of the Lord we are in the land of the living there are so so many things that are coming against us so many things are happening but to God be the glory we can stand and we can say indeed to God be the glory we are indeed blessed every person's purpose in the church is different some people go to church because they want a healing. Some people go to church because they can't do any better. Some people just go to church because they want to better their lives. They're looking for opportunities and all of these things. Glory be to God. But what is our purpose today for being in the house of the Lord? Is it just because it is another church day? Or is it because God has been good? Is it because he is worthy to to be praised? Is it because we acknowledge him as God? Or is it because we want to get in the good books that God will be able to bless us? That God will be able to bring us through something that we are going through? And that is why so many times after our needs are met, glory be to God, then our commitment, our commitment begins to turn down because our needs are met. Glory be to God. But this morning, can we just change our mind can we just say Lord touch me again bring me back to the place where I first receive you bring me back to the place today God where you are all that matters bring me back to the place God where I am so in love with you glory be to God bring us back to the place glory be to God where I can stand and say for Christ I live and for Christ I die the world is coming against me, yes, but I must stand firm. I must stay true to the name that is above all other names. Today, Father, bring us back to that place where we first receive you. The word of God tells us in the book of Numbers that the Levites must be washed. They must be washed and that they are to be taken from among the children of Israel. On our fasting, I spoke about how the whole house of Israel, the principles by which we live,
live uh, and we glorify God, uh, they were no longer held uh, to a high uh, regards. Uh, nobody regards the church of the living God uh, or the things of the spirit anymore. Uh, any and everything goes in the church. Uh, people live how they want to live in the church. Uh, we do what we want to do in the church. Uh, glory be to God, we are in fasting and prayer today uh, and when we come in fasting and prayer we come to affirm the spirit of God uh, and we come to deny away the things of the flesh uh, the things that is setting us back uh, the things that is holding us back from the presence of God uh, we come to prayer and fasting uh, to say God we don't come to pray uh, for the world uh, because we are a part of the world uh, and if my life is not cleansed uh, then the world World is going to be more infected and polluted we were listening to a radio station and they were talking about how the earth is getting warmer and warmer every day and we have to understand that the hatred we have to understand that the things that we are emitting from our lives that is what is causing the world to be in the state and the position that it is in and when we no longer hold the principles of God in high regards we hold our prime ministers and our leaders, our teachers, our principals, our banking officers and all of those people. We hold them in high regards. But when it comes on to the principles of God, we fall flat. We fall flat. So the word of God came to the man of God that the Levites must be taken from among the children of Israel and they ought to be cleansed. Because they are to be served, they are to serve in a spiritual position. They are to be given a position because when we are low in the spirit, it is those that have been pulled away will be able to lift us up. It's when we remember, when we are low in the spirit, it's when we remember the goodness of God is when we remember that I was sick and only God could heal me. Is when we remember that God, I was nothing in the eyes of the world. I was nothing in the eyes of my family. But Jesus! And when we remember, it is going to bring us up. It's going to bring us out of the valley. When we can tell God that God remember what I've done. Remember how I walked. Remember how I prayed. Remember God that I've been to church. Remember God everything that I have dedicated my life to. And God is going to look upon our record and say that of a fact, let the devil take his hands from off her. Let us be cleansed today. Let us say, God, there are some things in my life because I am unable to pray for somebody else if I have something within my heart. My prayer is going to be void. It's going to be void. And then we're going to say, God, a young lady said that the amount of prayers that her mother received when she was diagnosed last year with cervical cancer, and she said that her mother died. They, they recently announced this influenza. She was only 36. And she died from cervical cancer. And they're saying that if prior could have saved her, then she would have been saved. But the word of God said that if there is iniquity within our hearts, if there is unforgiveness in our hearts, our prayers are going to be void. And we do not want to come here every single day and our prayers are void. That when the enemy begins to buffer us, our prayers are not going anywhere. We want our prayers uh, to be accepted. That deliverance and healing will go forth. The word of God tells us that the water should be sprinkled upon them. According to Numbers 8, waters must be sprinkled upon them. This is for the purifying, that they will be purified. And that they are to share. This is the word of God coming to the man of God. 
that they ought to shave all, they ought to shave all their flesh and let them wash their clothes to make themselves clean. And so the Levites were to be washed. The word of God said that it's the word of God that will wash us and make us clean. That means we are going to expose evil. The evil that is within our lives, we must expose them that we will be clean from them. When we expose the evils that is within our lives, bring them to the place of humiliation. Say, God, I have a problem with forgiving. I have a problem with loving. I have a problem, God, with sharing. I have a problem. When we expose the evils that is within our lives, only then we will be made clean and be free of them. So many are in the church of the living God looking for God to bring about deliverance today. Fasting is all over the island today. But unless we can bring our evils to open shame and tell the enemy that I know I not only identify you in others, but I am identifying you within me. I am identifying you within me uh, that there are sometimes uh, people in my home I get upset. Uh, there are sometimes uh, my children get on my nerves. Uh, there are sometimes uh, family members get on my nerves. Uh, glory be to God. Uh, we have to expose the evil. The word of God said Jesus put principalities and powers to an open shame. We have to do that even within our lives. We have to do it with those around us. Whether it's our children that is getting us out of our true character. We have to let them know that you are getting me upset. And whenever the enemy is using them, we have to identify that we will not sin against God. Because the devil is looking for an opportunity to afflict our body. Shonda. And he's using the disagreement that we have with our family members in our home. He's using the disagreement, the little arguments between our wives, between our husbands, between our relatives. He is using those to afflict our body, to afflict us. That everything that we're doing, we're wondering why the heaven is shut up against me. Why is it that things are not going the way that they should go? We look and say, God, what am I doing? But the Lord is saying today, expose the evil within you. When we expose them, they have no more room. Jesus could cast them out because Jesus exposed them. Jesus brought light. And when light comes, everything in darkness must go. Oh, Jesus. He went over the Gerardines. And when the evils in the man saw the light, they said, why you come to trouble us? Don't trouble me. And that's what the evil says when God brings the light in the church to expose the evils. Glory be to God. We can't pray for others until we first pray for ourselves. Until I can bring my evils. I said to God many years when I started. Because of everything I went through with my family. There were hatred in my heart. But when I gave my life to the Lord. I said God. I cannot serve you with this hatred that is in my heart. Take it off. Can 
I tell you this morning, the heart is a vessel and the only thing it, it was made to hold is love. And anything else, you take a plastic container that it was built to hold water and you will put some hot oil in that container. Just let your imagination, what is going to happen to that container? It's not going to be the same anymore. And our hearts are not the same as how God sent us here with it. When the hot oil goes in that plastic container, it's going to be disfigured. And when our heart is disfigured, our mind and our body and our whole life is going to face the consequences. The word of God said that we must shave all, not some of the flesh. We must shave all the flesh. We cannot keep back anything. We have to clean house. We can't say, God, I have this cheer a long time. God knows that the cheer is harboring an owner. He knows the cheer you love him most. It, it, it is harboring the owner. And every time you go out and you come in and you burst the door, you get it. But when you get used to it, it's nothing. But whenever you go out and come back, something is wrong. God is in the saving business and he cannot save us if our heart is disfigured. And he said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 18, go down to the potter's house. You will see him rotting a work on the way. And he said that when we are marred, when we are marred, he knows that the enemy will afflict us. But can we invite the light of God that we ourselves will be light by shaving all our flesh? and wash our clothes we must separate ourselves from the evils that find themselves within us the word of god said jesus said that when a house is clean the man get rid of the demon that is within him the principalities and the powers that we don't understand is there within us jesus said that it wants to come back and it's going to go out when it comes and see that the house is clean, but it is not occupied. He's going to bring back some friends. And it might start with a headache. That was all we were dealing with. And we thought that maybe I need to drink some more water. I need to probably take a tablet. But because it's not occupied with the word, with commitment to God, the demon himself goes and come back with back pain, his friends. He come back with the hand no longer moving. He come back with no, I can't see properly out my eyes. He come back with no God. I'm unable to walk properly. I'm unable to eat. I'm unable to sleep because the demon went for his friends. And they are now working to take the roof off this house. And we are worried. We are concerned. Shave all the flesh today. Separate. Separate ourselves from the things that will fight against God. Because we have to understand that shaving is a form of rejection. It's a form of rejection. So we have to reject the things 
that the enemy is bringing against us. And when we reject these things, when you reject anything, it's like you're shaving. You're shaving things away from you that we can be conjoined to the truth of God. We have to choose this morning. The enemy has been sitting and living for a long time unbothered and untroubled because we continue on the same path. But this morning, can we say, Lord, teach me how to pray. As what the disciples said, I want to know. Elisha said, I need a double portion. And can we ask for that double portion? What Elisha was asking Elijah for is that God, I need, I need to know how to pray. And I need to know how to fast. I need to know what to accept. And I need to know what to reject. Glory! We can answer that double portion and put principalities and powers to an open shame today. Christ can break. Hey. Christ can 
Whenever you doubt the Savior, never you doubt the Savior, never you doubt the your worship can take the devil's hand from off of your life your worship can take the devil's hand from off of your body Christ can break every factor Christ can break so worried about the things that you're so concerned about the situations in your life that the enemy use to weave chains use your situation to make chains and to mold you with it do you believe that this morning that Christ can break every fence Christ can pray. Yeah, we fight her. Christ can pray. We fight her. He can. He will. He can set. You, you're free. Can I encourage you this morning? Never you doubt the Savior. Never you doubt, doubt the Savior. one more time never you doubt the
Glory be to God and had him in the prison. The church was praying. The church was praising. Glory be to God. The church did not go and hide, but the church were praising. There is something about praise. There is something about worship. There is something about music. Come on, one writer said that when it hits you, you feel no pain. There is something about when you bring your mind and your heart together to worship God. He's going to do something. We're too quiet, man. We're too quiet. We're too quiet. We're too quiet. We're too quiet. But when we pray, we bless your name, Jesus. Turn your Bibles with me this morning to the book of Psalm 39 for our lesson this morning. Psalm 39. And it says, a psalm of David to the chief musician, even to Jeduthun. And Jeduthun, these were temple worshippers. And when we go back to the book of First Chronicles, we will see that these were the temple musicians, the musicians, those that were over the music in David's time. So they would minister the music in the tabernacle until Solomon would build the temple. And when we talk about Jeduthun, we're talking about praise. We're talking about joy. So David is trying to appeal to the person that will read this psalm that even though you are going through you are putting your trust in God. That you understand life. You understand that life is fleeting. You understand that you do not have any strength of your own. You understand that the life that is within you. So when you are reading the psalm, you have to make certain that you are in that position. To say that God... I have joy. So he's saying that we are going through some things that are causing us to be weak. But we are putting our trust in God. Because God is going to bring about deliverance. So this is what the music is all about. Life is fleeting. Life is empty. It is empty. And so we are appealing to God's mercy every day. And when we understand this about the word, we will apply it to our lives with understanding. It says, I said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace, even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days, that it is that I may know what it is, that I may know how frail. I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, Sila. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb 
I open not my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blows of thine hand. When thou with rebukes doest correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity, Sila. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as all my fathers were. O spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Can we read that last verse again? Oh, spear me that I may recover strength. We all want to recover our strength. There are so many out there today in the hospital, even in our homes and among us that we need to recover our strength. Yes, and we know that the Lord, that he is patient in our state of temptation. And so for those of us that we might be going through and we want to recover strength and we're asking the Lord to spear us today. But can I tell you as what the psalmist encouraged us today is that silence is golden. Silence is golden. So when we choose to be impatient on the suffering, and then we are musing on our impatience. We are conclude, we conclude that life is indeed short. To waste no time, especially when it comes on to us serving God. We have to know that our hope is in God. And that once we allow that hope to remain in him as what David wrote this song. But it was to the person that is going through hell and high water. David wrote this psalm for the person that is facing sickness, the person that is facing enemies surrounding them. Persons, and when I say enemy, I don't mean man and woman, but I mean situation. I mean circumstances surround you like a sea. And we are like a, an island. We are like an island in a body of water. And there is no place to run. But David is speaking to us from his throne. And saying that there is hope. But be silent. It's not every day you get up and say. I feel this way. It's not every day you get up. And tell everybody around you. Tell it to Jesus. Because Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will come till the day is done. Yeah.
used to be true. Just a little girl. Carrying the load from far, far distance. Had to climb mountains. Leap over cliffs. And as I was walking and looking at children enjoying themselves. And I began to feel daunted within myself. And I looked at myself alone in the forest. Had to be doing all of this work. But God had a purpose. And he's not, we are waiting for God to come and take the load off our head. He's not because there's a lesson for you to learn in it. He's not going to remove the load. He's not going to take it off your head, Sister Thomas. You will have to carry it because there's a lesson for you to learn. But as I go through by myself alone, say, God, why? Everybody my age enjoying at their sports day, running and enjoying, and I am here like a slave. Until a woman, an elderly person appeared out of nowhere. And this is what she said. Jesus, no.
knows what God say you must be silent man sometimes you talk too much God said be silent and your peace and your power will come in our lives even now God and that your word will take root in our hearts that as your word is about to go forth our lives will be blessed we pray that you will add a blessing to your word oh God and bless your man servant strengthen him in the power of the Holy Ghost that your name will be praised in Jesus name hallelujah somebody give God praise your pastor in Jesus name Bless your name, we honor you, we exalt you in God. And this morning we lift you up, O oh God, and we praise you. You are so wonderful to us. And the great things you know all about our struggles. And this morning as we come, we are not without troubles.
and struggles, we are with challenges. And you know all about them. And we give you all because you already know them. And we ask for strength. We ask for the spirit to bear them. Because the flesh is weak and is unable to stand. But if you give us the spirit today, Lord, we will do according to your will. Bless this day's sermon. Bless your children. Bless Sister Grant that do the first lead. And bless every worshiper that, that participate. And now we are going to look at your word. And we need your wisdom, your understanding, and we need your spirit to flow in our heart. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated today. I would like to start like this. There are many laws passed in our country in general. Many of them were in place before we were born. But as society developed, they made amendment to many laws. For the betterment of the people, it should not be for the worse off. Once a law is amended, it must be for the betterment of the people. And today, we are asked to amend our ways. We can start this Christian journey and certain laws and precepts and certain behavior and certain attitude and many things. But to where we reach today, we have to amend that life for the betterment of our soul. We want to look at the book of Jeremiah chapter 7. And we want to take our time and learn at the same time. Some Bible have a heading the Temple Proclamation. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 1 and follow. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord house and proclaim there this word. And said, Hear, ye, hear the word of the Lord all ye of Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. So all the worshipers need to hear the word of the Lord, what the Lord is saying. Yes, we may start out and doing our own Christian living in our own way. But there are points in our life now we have to stop doing so and amend our ways and our doing for the benefits of our soul. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your way and your doing, and I will cast you to dwell in this place. So I can see that there is something good is going to happen when we amend our way. 
God will cause us to dwell in the place that God wants us to be. And if we are unable to mend our way, then we are not going to be able to dwell there. Because the law will not permit us to dwell there. We have to be evacuated to somewhere else. But once we can amend our ways, then God said, I will cause you to dwell where? In my house. There are many persons cannot dwell in the house of the Lord. Just in not in line words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. We cannot blame in the temple of God and believe that we can do as we want. We must also remember the temple of the Lord. The physical building is one aspect of it. And the human temple is the spiritual temple of the Lord. But it always will use the physical one because that's where we all come to worship him. And he wants us to amend our ways. He wants us to do the right thing. Yes, that you can be among us and able to bless us, deliver us, and heal us from all that we're going through. We are facing a lot. And why we are facing it's because we stand in the way of our virtue. We refuse to change our ways. I don't know why. Right now, I have to change my eating and drinking. For the betterment of my health, I have to do so because I don't want to damage my life. And it's the same way with the word of God to our Christian life. It don't matter how best or how nice life seems today. It is detrimental to us. Many of the things that I have to stop eat, I love them. But you look at love them and look at the effects what it's going to do to you at a later day. And you can choose. If you want to live, you do the right thing. You want to die, you continue to do the wrong thing. So I want to live. So what I have to do? I have to forget about the taste and everything about it. It is right there in front of me. Temptation and everything is there. But there is a restrainer that keep on working. So my brothers and sisters today, check your life. See how you're living. And ask yourself question. If this is what God requires of me. And if it is that you change, and the change will be for the betterment of your life.
You will find to see the blessing of God flowing in your life. Your stress level will go down. Your worrying will be over. And all your problems will be in control. Just like our song said, Jesus knew all about our struggles. Now the train of Israel just not in line words. So God is saying, don't trust in line words. And I know for this house, I don't speak my line words here. And I know Sister Grant don't speak none. I don't know for other person, they have to know. But I don't speak my land word. I use the Bible. So let the Bible be liar. But I will not be one. Trust him not in line words, saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if he thoroughly amend your ways, thoroughly, you ever hear about tire, 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 entirely cleansing? Entirely cleanse, amend our ways. All aspects of our life need to change. It don't matter what gonna happen. For the betterment of your life, you have to do so. Because there are many things we have done which is wrong. And God is done with them. It's just like a part in the Bible that speaks about, I think, in Israel. When the men them come up to Jerusalem. And all those that married to strange women have to send back the wife. They have to do so because it was wrong in the sight of God. They amend their ways right there. And able to get the blessing of God. If, if he, for if he thoroughly amend your way and your doing, if he thoroughly execute judgment, between a man and his name. How do we execute judgment? Amount our fellow men and neighbors. There is partiality there. There is favoritism there. And there is a love of God there. How do we live in it? bad mind and anger, all of these things. We eat, we not talk to one another, we have no friendship with one another, and we'll behave in certain ways. All of those have to change. Paul said one liquor leaven. Never in the whole lot. He can sin alone. Cause Israel to lose the battle. And if we continue with li these liquor sin, it will stop the flow of the spirit of God. It will stop God from healing me and healing you. And healing your friends and healing your neighbor. Healing our children them. That want to turn into internet monster. God will able to heal them. But if we continue piling up sin upon sin. In small quantities. It going to become large. Hating bad mind. And swelling me not talk to you. That simple words. That easily can understand.
So we have to amend our ways. I hear a pastor was preaching this morning that fasting did not heal the person that he was referring to. But what bring healing is his good work with God. That he could refer to God. How we used to live for him. He came up God in the memory box. And God would bring down his cards. His card. And see that it is true. And have mercy. Today. Probably is not prayer going to help us. Probably is just to say, I'm sorry. I forgive you. All the way your sister grants a person in a hospital is dying. And operation, right? And all was there is for the person to forgive. And the person forgive the other person. And the person were ill in hospital and come out. And forgiveness is a blockage to God movement. Remember Jesus said when you have up your brother, you are a murderer. You are shedding innocent blood, you are killing somebody spiritually. And we want to stop slaughter people in this house. We are small groups. And we cannot allow the devil to reign in us. So today, for us that is here, make a note of it. That you need to amend your ways. Turn. Go to the extreme and get it right. Make up your mind and get it right once and for all. Nobody is saying you must be friend, bottom and seat to nobody. But you don't have up nobody in your heart. If he oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, remember is in the temple. Neither walk after other gods to your earth. Israelites were instructed and they refused to comply and they faced calamities upon calamities, destruction upon destruction. They are our example. If we follow their footsteps in rebellion. So whether we walk after other gods, but what about the other set of things? So you see, we have the right to do the right thing to remain in the house of God. I hope I'm not walking after any gods to my earth.
and a God that never helped me. Then will I cast you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your father forever and ever. That land of safety. That land where milk and honey flowing, be happiness and joy. Where I think there is no grave there. They buy burials at different places. So keep the land pure of any dead things. Not even their dead did not bury there. Their dead buried at a burial spot that was purchased for that purpose. Chief is sick out. They kept the land clean from all dead things. I think verse eight. Is another lesson to us. God now is telling us what we are doing. The only trust in line words that profit not, that cannot profit. We trust in many words that cannot bring in the benefit that it claims to have. But when we trust in the word of God, it comes true. And the word of God is that line words, they are word of truth. Yes. Will he steal murder and commit adultery and swear falsely and burn incense and to bear and walk after other gods whom he knows? Many gods we are walking after, and many incense we burn to build the false worship of things, the physical things that have no life. We attribute all the honor of God to it, and all the glory belongs to it. that we end up stealed and murder and committing adultery and swear falsely and burn incense and to bear and walk after other gods who we know not. We don't know them, but we're going after them. Although they cannot help us, that they are not a God. They are just things of this world. And when we do all of that, all of the bear worship, killing out ourselves, somebody said to make twins. You can make twins. 
is only God alone can make two ends meet. No human being cannot make two ends meet. And I can challenge you. You could have all the money that you think will satisfy your needs. You're still going to come up short and still cannot get certain things. Because when you look, the money done and you don't even reach halfway yet. You want more things and the money just cannot reach there. So the ends them cannot meet. But God no all to let the money reach. And he not rob nobody. And he not scam nobody. But he's God. And that's why I want us to trust him. And amend our ways thoroughly. You know when we just start to serve God. Or we used to be loyal and we tried to do everything right. And nothing could stand in our way. We push it out of our way because we say we're going to church. But today we are weak. Because of the cares of life. And the amount of dead things we take upon ourselves. And enough dead things we take upon ourselves. Because we thought they give life. But God know that they bring death. Because it is that good to walk with somebody responsibility. And they don't, they, they don't even care. Of their own responsibility. And you killing yourself. To say you have to make two ends. And that's why we pursue him after these gods that you know that they never work for you when your back was against the wall and you call on the unseen God. You don't know how he lift you out. But one thing you can say to God be the glory. Great things you have done. And when we do all our abominable worship to build, suit ourselves, praise God. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all this. Abominable things. Because you are doing them. And you come in the house of God and you profess. In this house which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. We cannot jinx God. We cannot treat God with our life. God knows our life. Know how we are living. So when we come to church and profess, that I'm a child of God, God knows we are liars. God wants to send them to a place named Shiloh for them to see what he has done to it. So when we act in a wicked way against God, things is going to happen in our life.
things are going to happen. And in the same book, God said, don't pray for these people. I will not hear, I will not have sympathy, I will not have compassion, I will not deliver. Because they are not walking unto the word of God. So let us, my objective word today is to amend our ways and our doing. Get it right. Get back our life right with God. That's all I want to say. No. I don't want to say anything more. Because if my life is right with God, then the blessing going to flow, the healing going to flow. And where we are today, the spirit not flowing, the blessing not flowing, the flesh is getting weary. And say, I don't want it to look bad. It don't look bad already. Because the Lord knows it look bad. But he's not getting the worship, but Baal, but Baal is getting it. And the adoration and praise is going up to him. Yes. So God bless us this morning. As we leave this house, remember, amen your ways. Live good. You have people in your heart, get them out. Young people have bitter water, try sweeten it, make it get sweet. And live free. That we can able to execute righteous judgment. So when God come among you, he will release the anointing upon your life. God will not release the anointing when we have bitterness in our heart. When we are is that right in the sight of God, he's not going to give you So we don't have to really do much for it. Just nobody do nothing. Than a many ways. And do what is right in the sight of God. And you will just get it. When your life is right, the spirit is right. You stand on your feet this morning. Loving Father, this morning I thank you for this water that is present before you. I am not worthy, God, to even pray to you. Now I stand before you. But because of your grace and your mercy this morning, I pray, God, that you will consecrate this water for me today. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost, through loving spirit, never disagree, word of doubt, and amen. And those that in America, God, and in the wider area of Jamaica, I consecrate them also in the name of the Father, praise God, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost. Three loving spirit, never disagree, world without end. Amen and amen. Touch and sanctify this water in your name. Amen and amen. God bless you today. As we go, just remember, amen. And do what is right.